Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Joseph, hope everyone's doing well today. So, I got a comment the other day by a user called Israel, and they asked, can I convert the save and load system for text file I created a while ago into a um, drag and drop game maker tutorial? I'm going to highlight one, I haven't done drag and drop in game maker for the past, I don't know. When was Game Maker 8 released? I think 16 years ish. Um, was the last time I did something around drag and drop. So, this is my conversion. So, before I get into it, massive thank you to everyone on the channel. You guys are awesome. You have no idea, and I really appreciate you guys. Um, you make a massive difference to the channel. So, I'm going to show you first what I've done, so you guys can see. I've got my load button, really poorly done. My save button, really poorly done. And if I drag this over, wait, add windows, you'll see no file. And if I shuffle, and I click the save key, generates a save. If I boot up the save, you can see the same kind of data as you saw in the last tutorial. And if I hit the load key, it loads the same way. If I delete my save, save again, it will regenerate it. If I hit load again, it changes. Okay, now that's out of the way. Let's discuss how this works. My god, did I forget how much I hated drag and drop. Let's get into it. First steps first, we create a save function. So this works very differently from how um, the normal practice of how we program works because certain functions can't be replicated the way I do them and execute code easily. So, what this does, and I've tried to convert as much of it as I can to um, drag and drop. So, the way this looks is this becomes the function. Do I actually still have it open is the other question? No, I do not. So this, in the original code here, I actually use the if left button pressed equals to my mask effectively or the object ID, then execute code. Drag and drop doesn't do that very nicely. So the way we do it is we use left press and then within the left press, we have to declare all our functions that we did before. So. In drag and drop, we've got all these lovely options, and they've actually expanded it quite significantly from when I last saw it. Ironically, going back to a video I'm in development hell with at the moment, talking about structs, which are literally... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's somewhere in these menus here. Uh, declare attempt, declare... Do, 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 macro, I was staring at it before. So in here there is... There it is. Structs. I didn't even know that existed, and I had a user comment it to me, and I've actually made a video that I'm just in the middle of finishing up to release as well. So they added that, that didn't exist originally. Okay, so what this does, back on topic, is I have to declare the temporary value as what I did in the former code, but I have to do it by drag and drop. I declare my line count as well as a temporary value, then I assign a value to my save. Now, it's important that you have to use an assign value, not a redeclare, because otherwise when you're resetting it, it doesn't work. So this reassigns the value. And in here, you can see here, I assign and pull the value down and then within the execute. So the best way to think of this is this is here in between no man's land is the equals and then this is functioning out to what you're trying to get it to do the next thing we do is i have to execute some code because there's no nice way to run these functions so basically normally what you'd assume to do is these need something assigned to them but because it's not the way they work we have to look at it a different way execute code gets around that problem so I just drag the value back through into here, run the execute. And you can see here, I've still got the classic OI that I put in there. Um, then I do the next step, which is I drop down a line 
I then do another assign um, value, which is line count plus one, which means I add one to my line, clamp, line count. Then I go line count, um, give it a random a number as it functioned before. Then again, another block of execute code. The reason again is you can see here, there's no easy way to run, let's say a repeat function in here without making it very messy. So I've just left a block of code in here, which is the original code. Now, I will highlight, you can actually literally take my programming in the other one, put in an execute code, drag, dump that in there, and it works. I did think about just putting that up as the video as a joke, but I actually did some work on it for you guys. So basically you can execute it out like this and it works the same way. It is a lot messier in my opinion, but it works. Now the other thing I should highlight is yes, you get these execute code functions. So super useful because you can actually take sections of code, insert them, and then if you need to declare your variables, variables, just declare them like you normally would using drag and drop. Okay, so that's the load, oh sorry, the save function. Let's look at the load function. The load function is a bit different because it's got a little bit more going on in it. In the create, we have to assign, did I use the right one? I think I did. Like I said, I haven't done this for ages. Yeah, assign variable should do the same thing, I think. So assigning, it hasn't given me any errors. So assigning the error um, variables like this. Now I've declared them as arrays and we can do a declaration for an array this way inside the assign. So we can still use our bracket function inside that. So that assigns all the positions for the read to come through. The next step is the left press. So this is the same principle as before because I can't do a simple read the way I do it before in code. We have to go a back a layer and use an event call rather than an execute code call. In here, it's pretty much the same song and dance. I've declared a bunch of variables, assigned values to them. So you can see here, for example, I have assigned in here my text call function. I uh, not call, sorry, my um, text read function, same way as I done with my text um, say function. Uh, as I break it down, so I've literally tried to break it down into as much as I can, um, so you guys can see how it kind of look. Basically breaking down each layer of the way. Again, this block of text I couldn't modify because it's very tricky to find a repeat call, and within this repeat call I've then got multiple functions happening that are important to how files are read. So rather than breaking it down, I try to keep it in one section. Then it's basically a close because we don't want to create memory leaks. Very important, we don't create a memory leak. And then the last step is we draw ourselves and then we execute. So I've left that the same only because this is more to do with just demonstrating that it's loading the data than it is uh, actually showing that it's, what's the word? It's, it's just a, it's a test tool more so than it is a, critical part of the function. It's just to prove that the data is loading in and out. Okay, so that's today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry about the bit of rambling. It's been a while since I've used drag and drop. I still wouldn't recommend drag and drop. I'd go straight into um, the GML side as ironically you can actually see here convert to GML. So you can actually go straight to the GML side of things. Um, but if you guys want help with drag and drop ask i might be able to do it i might not like i said it's been 16 years so i'll talk to you guys later have a great day and i'll see you next time